Right, so this graph gives you an idea. This is um, recorded music revenue, but it is reflective of the industry as a whole. And it's, to, it's to give you an idea in terms of um, where we are. And you see that digital is just this tiny little like, thing here, okay? Compared to um, the core product of CDs here, and I'll talk more about core products <coughs> and um, business models later. So that's one view. Oh, how do I move that? <coughs> ah, right. Okay, so that's one view. So you've got people saying, oh, the music industry is in decline and it's doomed and it's dying, we're not going to have a music industry in the next five years. Um, and then you've got people um, that bring this kind of stuff up um, and they say, well, but the music industry is actually worth 168 billion. Okay, so. The reason I, I, I'm telling you all this is, is because it's again it's to stimulate your thinking. It's to stimulate your thinking. It's to get you asking questions, um, and also to, to bear in mind that when you hear this kind of information through your entrepreneurship journey, it's not to take that information out of context and to look for the patterns and the trends. Um, when they say that the music industry is doing great, um, what they're really saying is they're kind of looking at the broader music industry. Okay. The, you know, to me, you know, the, the music industry isn't as, as um, is, with the golden age of the CD is no more, that's, that's obvious, but it's still a very resilient industry, okay? It hasn't shut down overnight, I'd say. So don't panic if you think that everything's going wrong, <coughs> because it's all a trend. Right, so let's look at some of the historical trends when it comes to technology in the music industry. So, um, at the beginning of the 19th century, we had this thing called parlour music in the UK, and everybody that um, loved live music would go and see concerts here, decided that they were going to get pianos and invest in musical education and um, they were going to uh, play music in their parlours, right, parlour music. Now, this trend, and this is why I talk about trends and why I'm talking about this will become apparent. Um, this upset the live music industry at the time because they said, well, <coughs> if everyone can buy pianos and play music in their own front rooms, then why would they ever come to a concert ever again? Right. Right. There you go. Then the gramophone comes along. And the gramophone upset the sheet music industry. Because the sheet music industry said, well, you know, if everybody can buy recorded music, then why would anybody buy sheet music? We weren't kind of far off with that, really. But they, um, but they protested <coughs> about that, and um, they decided that um, this was going to be the demise of the sheet music industry. So, then we have the advent of radio, and radio upset the recorded music industry to the point where they lobbied and radio was boycotted. If you actually if you Google it and you do your own research, you'll actually see um, news stories um, about it. It's all in the newspapers at the time. <coughs> and of course, um, the, record, the record industry at the time said, well, if everybody can listen to the radio for free, then why would anybody buy records? No. And then, of course, television comes along, and radio got, gets very upset about TV and says, well, you know, why would anybody listen to the radio when they can watch all singing, all dancing um, stars in their front room? How could we possibly handle that? 
So the reason I make this point is that there are what, what we see throughout the music industry, these miniature um, technological disruptions. Okay? So we see these cycles of technological disruption. So very much like today, we have the internet disrupting what was um, the core product for the music industry in terms of the al album or the CD format or tape or vinyl. So here is your next exercise. The music industry is an example of creative what? Guess the word. <clears throat> Progression. Innovation. Uh, disruption. Technology. There's not one right answer. Is it simple? Yeah. Is there one answer? One word. Yeah, I'm just looking for one word. Business. Really? Change. Cycle. Movement. Is it a positive or negative word? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want one. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> It's a bit of an unfair question to ask, actually. So, who's, huh? Destruction. Okay. It's an example of creative destruction. So, this is a bit that I find interesting because I like economic theory. So, um. Creative destruction. It's a, a music industry, and what's happening, what's happened throughout the music industry, and what is happening today is a clear example of creative destruction. So, this guy, Joseph Schumpeter, is an Australian economist. He was um, around in the 1930s, a very big thinker and a very influential thinker. Um, he says that economic growth happens in waves. Okay, so and these waves are actually extended periods of technological. Um, a revolution and innovation. And throughout those waves, what actually happens is old industries decline and new industries uh, replace them. Okay, so he uh, says that throughout, through that economic activity, um, there are more jobs and therefore more buying power, which creates more demand and therefore more jobs. So rather than this idea of um, this kind of linear <coughs> Uh, this sort of linear uh, uh, activity that happens with um, with the economy or, or in terms of the trend, what he's saying is it's waves. So if we go back to that idea of the um, the decline of the industry life cycle. You have this wave, and then you have another wave, and you have another wave. And what he says in his theory is that it's actually the entrepreneurs that um, create that disruption because what they do is in order for them to become competitive they adopt technology for them to get you know for the little guy to get the edge over the big guy you know they get they adopt the technology they find new ways of doing things innovative ways of doing things fresh thinking that kind of thing you know um, and because they're looking to get the edge over the big guy and, and once they do that they, they they have this um, embryonic stage because they, what they're doing gets um, taken on by the early adopters, by people who love innovation. And um, if they're lucky, what they're doing hits an S curve and it takes off. Okay. So, to sum up, entrepreneurship is a key driver of economic growth. Um, and it's where the opportunistic entrepreneur can engage in new technology to disrupt the status quo and get an edge on the major players. An example of that, whether you like him or not, is Sean Parker. Yeah? So, why is it important to the music business? Well, because we need jobs in the music industry. We need more jobs. Um, it will help promote regional balance. So if you are engaging in music, into, um, music business enterprise, then it's totally possible for you to uh, you know, set up in a regeneration area. Um, actually, um, I will say that um, I am fairly near Croydon, and they've actually put one billion into Croydon at the moment, off the back of the riots. Okay? 
So it's a, regen it's, it's a regeneration area. Um, and the plan there is to turn Croydon into sort of the new, the Silicon Roundabout of the South East. So they're really investing in tech. And music sits very closely with tech as well. So it's something, if you are looking to set up, then that's something to think about because it, what it means is that there, is, there are um, resources available. Okay. Um, again, talking about reducing the concentration of power. So music industry power agencies have less control um, and stimulating the equitable distribution of, creation, of the creation of wealth. Um, improving the standard of living, so access to online music education, for example. I don't know if you've noticed a trend, but universities are um, giving out, um, putting out their courses for free now. Yeah. Um, and enabling um, export of music business trade to other countries. So, there is a call for entrepreneurs especially in the music industry. Yeah. Oh, you mean there's a search for new ideas? Um, well, it's, there is a search for new ideas. Yeah, people do want new, we do want new ideas, but it's, um, I think that with the, 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 the climate of the music industry at the moment, that, again, the, there is a call for entrepreneurship. Okay. Is that a general idea, or who is calling specifically? <clears throat> who is calling specifically? It's um, no one is calling specifically, <coughs> but it's. Um, uh, see, I can't give you the answer to this question right now. This is at the end. <laughs> um, there is a, a general call for entrepreneurship because because the industry is in a state of flux. If an industry is in a state of flux, then that is the call for entrepreneurship. Would you say it's a good time. Would you say there's opportunity as opposed to a call? Opportunity? Yeah, there is opportunity. Would I say there's opportunity as opposed to a call? It depends on how it depends on how you feel about it. Really? Yeah, uh, if you if you like the opportunity word, is that this is a, I think a, a kind of what words you prefer. Okay, so some people might say, well, hey, you know, there's an opportunity here for, for me to do something. And some people might say, well, hey, there's a call for me to do something. And it's more, maybe more of a bit more of a responsibility. Yeah? I think, I think that entrepreneurs, by the nature of it, are opportunistic. Yes, they are opportunistic. It's not everybody that can be an entrepreneur. Oh, no, not everyone. Well, I think everybody has entrepreneurial spirit, but whether they actually move into a creating a business of economic growth and stability around the world. Um, they want to help entrepreneurs launch and grow startups and eradicate poverty, generate wealth and improve lives. So the reason I make this point to you is when I say talk about entrepreneurship, I'm not just talking about, hey, let's set up a business and make money so I can be, you know, so I can look after myself. Okay? It's it's more about looking at the bigger picture and this kind of this sense of being a global citizen and being uh, and, and taking on uh, some of that responsibility, if you like. Um, fostering entrepreneurship worldwide is a tool for development, <coughs> and that education is the first step towards empowering citizens through entrepreneurship. So, how do I get started? Right, so this is your next exercise. These are the questions that I want to ask, that we want you to ask yourself. Okay. Um, can you take risks? <coughs> can you make decisions on your own? Can you take rejection? Can you negotiate and persuade? And can you solve problems creatively? And can you ask for help? So you, you don't have to share your thoughts on that, but if you do want to share your thoughts on it, you're more than welcome. I think the last one's important. Asking for help? Mm, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people don't. A lot of people do need help, but they don't ask mm. It's a need help. Yeah? My question is what, what, what is the most important of all these points for you? For me personally? Yeah, um, you have to change the smile. <coughs> um, yeah, what was the most. Oh, I can't do it. Oh, no. Can I do yeah. Right, yeah. So my question is, we have six different points. Yeah. Here. What, what do you think the 
most important for you personally? For me personally, is it what like a sticking point for me? Um, I don't. Yeah, see, taking risks, making decisions. I can take. I'm happy to take risks. Happy to make decisions on my own. Rejection, you just get used to. <laughs> <laughs> Happens all the time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Somebody read something bad about me on the internet again. You know, um, not that anybody's done that. You know, a lot. But it's kind of like, well, you kind of, you know, by I think by token of going out there and doing something and you know putting your neck above the parrot bit, you're just asking for rejection, um, negotiating and persuading. I like to go out and do deals, um, solving problems creatively. Um, see, maybe the, the maybe the last one. I can ask for help, but I rarely ever get it. <laughs> I don't know what that's about. I don't know whether this is kind of something I'm attracting here. It's that like people seem to think that I'm this like person that can just do everything by myself, and I don't. I think what it is is that I can do everything by myself, but I don't want to do everything by myself. I'm really happy to delegate and get rid of stuff. I don't. I'm. Um, I really don't like the idea of this, you know, for, for all the, the artists in the room. Um, I really don't like the idea of the DIY music marketing thing, do it yourself um, trend that's out at the moment. I don't like it at all. You shouldn't be doing it all by yourself. You really have an option. <coughs> yeah, exactly. You have a different option that does that include. You ask for help. You ask for help. Okay. You ask for help. Okay. You like YouTube, for example. I think a lot of skills by doing YouTube and by making music. Yeah, I think I think what you need to um, what you need to think about is that when you're looking at you're looking at building your own business. Yeah, there are some that you're going to have to roll your sleeves up and you're going to have to um, do the dirty work. But you shouldn't be doing that all the time. You shouldn't be doing it all 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 of the work all the time. You need to. Think about building your team and get getting rid of some of that work so you can concentrate on what you do best. Because if you if you always do everything, then you don't allow yourself to do what you do best, um, and you don't allow yourself to do what you enjoy. And if you're not doing what you enjoy, then we'll move on to this in a second. But it's actually one of the first habits that I put. Then. Why? Why are you even bother, Why bother doing it? If, if, for example, what you really want to do is make music, but you're sitting there pouring over a legal contract and you really hate that part, or the accounting part. For me, it's the accounting part. I like this, the finance and the fiscal the fiscal strategy, but put me in front of uh, you know a row of numbers. I do it for me. Just, I like, just get some. I just want someone to do it for me and just bring me a one pager so I can just get a snapshot of what it is and then I can. Um, say to that person, like, okay, this is what I want now. Okay. Um, yeah. I think we we'll, like, some of us are just sort of struggling to do all this by ourselves. Where do we get help? Okay. Um, the way you get help is you collaborate and you partner with people. So you collab you, yeah. there, are, there are small marketing music companies that yeah. I help. I've seen them a lot on the, online. And just I've seen people around you, there's always someone that wants to, even students or anyone, the biggest yeah. form of marketing yourself is word of mouth. And a lot of companies will help this, a lot of small companies, you just got to keep searching. Yeah, it's, it's all about, okay, so when we were, when you were outside, actually one of the questions I wanted to ask you is that, you know, Presumably you're all networking, but what were you networking for? Okay, so this is one of the things that we talk about. Oh, we've got to network, network, network. But what do you, do you know what you're looking for when you go out networking? I mean, did you actually say to us, you know, does anyone, you know, it's one of the things that we kind of miss when we're networking, which is I, I'm looking for someone that can help me with this, this point that I really don't want to do. I, I need an accountant. Can I get a trainee accountant? I need someone to do my books for me. Is there somebody that you know that can do my books for me, that can do me a favour? And you've set parameters around that. You know, you're not going to rinse them for all their time. Okay? And there are people out there that actually, there are some people out there that really, believe it or not, they like to do other people favours. And this is what I say, when I say asking for help, sometimes, you know, it's, it's a case of people will offer you help and it will kind of just go over your head, which <coughs> sometimes that happens with me. People go, oh, do you want help with this? And I go, no, no, no. And I just, 
And I'm like, oh my god, that person actually offered to help me, and it's it's gonna because I am so you know used to doing everything for myself, or used to paying for services or delegating. Okay. Whereas actually, I probably have a lot more free help available to me than I am, um, you know, particularly aware of. Yeah. Do you reckon maybe the seventh point that is identifying problems as a big key skill? Yeah, it's all in terms of the skill, but what like, well, I'm. Yeah, absolutely. You do have to identify a problem because that problem is an opportunity, right? But what I'm thinking of is that is it one thing, is entrepreneurship for you? It's just like, this is like a qualifier. Yeah. So, um, okay, I'll give you a little personal uh, story just to, um, to sum up. Um, when I first started up, um, I left Sony. And I did what all people that live big, that leave big corporates do, which is they leave a big corporate and they just do their job, but they do it independently. Okay, that's the typical scenario. So I went into digital marketing and PR. And as a startup, and I was going out and networking and, and doing all that, all doing all that kind of stuff. Um, and um, because I was networking, I was networking with other startups. Um, and I really believe that water seeks its own level. So I was networking with other startups, and or, you know they they don't have any money to pay me, and I don't have any money <coughs> to pay them. And so they so they're saying to me, "Oh, well, let's barter, right?" So for example, I'll give you an, an example. Um, I was talking with a contact of mine, and I was doing some email marketing or like email coaching. I had that as, as a part of my offering, and she was a personal shopper. Okay. Um, and so this was the barter. She said, well, if you help me for an hour with my email marketing, I'll help you with your personal shopping. <laughs> that doesn't help me. You know, it doesn't help me. It's, it's like, you know, it's, there's nothing wrong with what she said. I mean, because that's very, you know, that's what she had to offer. But with the, this personal shopping thing, I would have to find a budget and we would have to go shopping. <laughs> right? <laughs> so I have to spend money. Right? Yeah. Okay, so according to you, yeah. how do you think a musician can help somebody? Because obviously the musician is pretty much helpless. And say most musicians feel like, where do I start now? Where do you start? I tell you. Yeah, so yeah. the question is, what can a musician do mm -hmm. to what can a musician offer somebody so they can get help back? Yeah. That is the thing. Is it is like it's offering? Yeah. Okay. What? Well, well, just to finish off the point. Okay. What actually? What? <laughs> We're really lucky now that there are, are micropayment sites, sites like Fiverr. You know Fiverr.com? Really bad service. Yeah, it's like a I actually have I've had brilliant experiences on that site. Okay? But it's like there are um, services like Odesk and Elance and People Per Hour and Fiverr. So where you can. What are these sites? So, so these are services that are, um, where you can find people that will do jobs for you um, at sort of lower rates of pay than you might pay someone in the UK. Okay, so like Tim Ferriss says, outsource your jobs to a different country. Okay, so the, the Fiverr um, is, uh, there are lots of different services on something like Fiverr, but it's $5 for us, so that's £3.20. We have a band okay. flyer estimate pretty much for the next gig on Fiverr. Uh, Did you, yeah, was, you were you happy? Yeah. yeah it's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've I've had quite a lot of work done. Quite a... the, the, the thing is with, with something like that is that you know some people have great experiences and some people have terrible experiences, and it really is down to you being very um, very doing your research in terms of who that person is and whether you really like that their work and you know and, and being careful and, and choosing and knowing what you want. If you you have to go to those sites knowing exactly what you want, and in, in terms of something like design. Um, then you have to give them very clear instructions in terms of a brief. Okay, so what I would say with something like that is pull off, you get, there's loads of design briefs that you can pull off the internet, so pull that off from the internet, fill it out, and you know, really discuss with them in terms to make sure that you get what you want. Also, if you don't like their work, they will fund you your three pounds <laughs> Okay? All right, so there's, that's one thing. So that's if, and the reason that I'm just kind of to sum up um, in terms of what happened with the personal shopping story, what I decided to do is like I say, water six at some level. So I thought, you know, if, if you want to do, if you want to get business, you have to do business. If you want to bring business in, you have to give business out. 
because it's it's reciprocal. It's not a case of oh, I'm you know, I it's I'm not going to um, give anybody any work, or I'm not going to give anybody any opportunity. I'm not, and I don't mean like pay, not not in terms of just paying people, but allow the opportunity that I have in terms of what I need doing for me and have that delegated out. Okay. Um, you need to sort of give that out for it to come back in. So it's, it's a reciprocal thing in business. So like I say, more to a certain level. So the first thing I did was after that experience was, not that it was a particularly bad experience, but it made me think. And I thought, okay, you know what, I need to, I'm going to go and actually go out and start paying people. Okay. So it's, it's, it's one of those things that it takes time. I understand how you feel. Okay, I do. Okay, so it's it's but it takes time and but really network, go out and meet people um, and and see see what you have to offer. That is everyone in terms of what you're offering. To go back to your question, it's everyone has something different to bring to the table. It might not be something that is particularly your, your within your music enterprise. It might be something different. But it really uh, what I mean is about creating this win-win situation so that you can get a leg up. Okay, but I really don't do everything yourself because, um, for example, especially with the marketing um, uh, DIY marketing trend that's going on at the moment, you know the reason um, you do DIY marketing and, and you're trying to looking to get more fans and more buzz and more awareness, but you don't tie it into a physical strategy, then you're going to go bust really really quickly if you're not bust already. Okay, all right. The reason um, is uh, what that's kind of doing is mimicking what the major labels do, which is they're creating buzz and awareness around what they're doing. But we, as SMEs, we need to tie our marketing marketing into sales targets. Otherwise, we're not going to. We're just not going to make it. We're not going to be able to pay for pay our bills, um, and we're not going to be able to create a future for ourselves. Because this is essentially the world that we live in. So when you you know one of the big things about entrepreneurship is you really need to have that that plan moving forward. You know you know am I going to be able to you know live in ten years time? Because where I'm at at the moment is I think to myself, well, okay, I know I don't I'm not going to rely on a pension, which is why I'm you know I want to build a business to sell it. That's my pension, right? Okay, so that, that's that kind of. Um, so you're thinking talking about self marketing, though. Do you not think it's come about because um, labels aren't signing bands anymore? Um, it's yes, it is because of that. It is because of that. Um, but to, you see, you always have to do some kind of self marketing. Because yeah. even if you, if you, it was back in the seventies, you had to at least gig. Yeah. It's kind of about yeah. necessity, though, isn't it? Really, and, mm. and the social media is a great tool, isn't it, for you know reaching sort of further parts. And, yeah. You no, know, so I, I have no problem, you know, with self promotion per se. You have to self promote. What I'm saying is, don't you know? <coughs> try not to do everything yourself. If marketing is that thing that you actually like doing yourself, then by all means do it. Okay. But what I'm trying to get everyone to understand this idea that you really shouldn't be doing everything yourselves because you'll stretch yourselves to your pin. Yeah. Something personal I'd like to share. Mm. Um, I can agree with what you're saying, but what I've seen that works for me personally is first of all, build myself out to do as much as possible and create something artifact, let's say. For example, with these talks, I had a week to invite the speaker from Birmingham Find a venue to create a website to do the marketing to bring the camera and bring the people. So that was one week, but after that it was real. So I had something that I could ask people for help because it was something that existed. So I could tell you, for example, hey, you're good at marketing, come over, we'll get some help, or you're good at graphic design, and come over, we'll make this better. So this is one thing that for me. It's good when you say it's good. First of all, you need to work a lot, yeah, yeah. ship, uh, deliver as quick as possible something that exists that is real, mm -hmm. and then you start making it perfect. Mm -hmm. Then you ask for help. But mm -hmm. first of all, you don't just ask for help, tell me. Mm -hmm. You do it. 
do the work yourself. Yeah, I think it's, it's uh, you know, I think it's important to do an element of the work yourself because you need to, it's so that you understand the inner workings of what you're doing. Right? Because if you don't understand the inner workings of what you're doing, then you can't effectively supervise it. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And I say, just for you, you know, building relationships, that's the key thing in business and music. To me, from, from my experience, is, is building good relationships with mm -hmm. people. Because you do. And you build relationships and you grow as a team, a team, and build relationships with people key. Yes. Yeah. But you know something? Uh, once you build something new, okay, so this one did exist, but now it's real, people start coming to you. Because they will mm -hmm. word of mouth, as you say. So those relationships, nobody would actually help me without having done this. Nobody would say that hey, this little kid has something to say. Nobody would believe me. You know? So you build something and then people start talking to you. Yeah. And this is how it goes back and forth. And you look for more people that eat well within your reach. Yeah. And then later, when you see one growth so a bridge brand, you know, yeah. you, it will come to you yeah. or you will find somebody that knows somebody. But first of all, yeah, coming, yeah, coming, out, coming out of your comfort zone. Sometimes, I know sometimes people are shy and they don't want to talk or they might still want to talk. Or I think this is a great theory about the zone, the comfort mm. zone, whatever. You know, you can reach up to some point, then it's good, just do it. Get this work done for yourself. When you want something more, delegate or try to find somebody else to do it for you. Mm. For example, for my band, I've done something now yeah. in advance. Now I just want a manager to Give me some more contacts and then also take it on to that. leverage yeah. what I've done already. So what I've done this already. Yeah, so you can put it on. <coughs> so you can put it on a step. Yeah. yeah. And the thing point is that you're only one person. You know, you can't do everything yourself. Yeah. I mean, sorry, but I mean, people say instead of do it yourself, it's decide it yourself. I'm sure you've heard that. Before. Yeah. So it I think I think that's why. Mm. So, I mean, generally build something on you, but it's a, it's a good thing to be able to kind of build something on your own to the point where you can make the decisions. Yeah. Where you know, people come to you, you decide whether you want to keep doing it on your own or get, get help. So. But this is what an entrepreneurship is all about, creating something new, right? First of all, you create it. So you are entitled to be called an entrepreneur. Otherwise, you're a dreamer. Okay, so let's move on. Right. It was a long story. Oh, as well, you know, it's always just uh, ask for help. <laughs> Asking each other about help. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. So, what habits do you think you need? Um, do you think you need to succeed as an entrepreneur in the music industry? All right. So, I'm going to go with these. These are ten habits for success, and I am keeping an eye on the time. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. Habit number one: Do what you love. But take it seriously. Now I'm sure that you're pretty much doing what you love unless you're doing the sort of the granular stuff that you really don't like doing. Like for example, I don't like looking through the seats and doing that stuff. Give that to someone else to do. Okay. Um, but you know, this, the stuff that I love doing is this stuff. Um, researching content, that um, talking about it. Um, doing deals, okay, and I also take it seriously. So yeah, do what you love and take it seriously. I think that's pretty self-explanatory, yeah? And, and by the way, on the website, there is an archive with all the talks so far. On the first one, the first talk, was, this is what Andrew does is there. The three things, one, you absolutely <coughs> love doing. Go for it, help yourself out, do it, passion. Mm -hmm. The second one, things you could imagine yourself doing, if you have time, just learn doing it. It's nice, you know. We'll take you one one step further. And there are things you obviously you hate doing. Just delegate, give it some, you know, pay them and let them do the job. Is what what he said. I agree. Don't interfere with the graphic designer if you have no clue about it. Give him the brief and then just let it get to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get stuff done because it takes preparation and design to get stuff done. So I, I have like one kind of, not well, I, there are many principles that I live by, there is, but there's one key principle that I have at the end of this presentation which will tie, tie into this. Um, get stuff done, okay? Um, it, the, thing, the reason I say that is because with entrepreneurship, it takes preparation and design to get it right. It's, it will, 
takes it takes a long time. It will feel like ages before anything really happens. And it will feel like you're really trudging sometimes and like nothing is happening and nobody is helping you and all that kind of stuff. So um, it really does, it feels like that. And so you'll have great times and you'll have meltdowns and I'm sure you've all been through that kind of stuff before. But um, if you get stuff done on a daily basis, you see yourself make progress. So, but I will come back to this point later. Right. Focus on the fan. Right, so we are in an industry that is experiencing a paradigm shift. It used to be, okay. it used to be that you had your fan here, let's say, fan. Yay, I'm a fan. Okay. And then what you have is you have this kind of, well, I'm going to call it a wall of noise, okay? And in that wall of noise you had radio and print and TV, okay? Those are kind of, you know, you had all this mainstream media, right? And that was how you got to the fan. That's how it used to be. This has changed now. Okay, so what you now have is, I'm going to write over it. This. This idea of direct to fan, if you, if you want to call it. Um, and direct to fan, okay, that can be, you could be you as the independent musician. It, you know, engaging a direct fan. It could be you as, as a record label engaging direct fan <coughs> too. Um, so, and so we have this paradigm shift, whereas here, we didn't have to worry so much about a relationship with the fan. You didn't have to focus so much on the fan, right? But because the internet has created this two-way conversation, they, they can talk to you know, power agencies up here. And the power agencies can hear what they're saying. So now we have to focus on these really deep, deep relationships. And um, when I say deep relationships, I mean deep relationships um, in more ways than one. So you might want to think about, you know, what are the other ways that I can engage with my fan over and above them being interested in, in let's say, you're an artist and my music. So um, there's a exercise that I've done in the past where I have asked, I've, I've brought an artist up and I've asked them exactly what they do from the minute they wake up to the time they go to bed. Um, it's actually a, an exercise that I picked up from an entrepreneur called, a music business entrepreneur called Terry McBride. Um, and what we actually find out is we find out everything that that person is interested in. So it could be, oh, you wake up in the morning, what's the first thing I do? Brush my teeth. And then what do I have? I have a cup of coffee. What kind of coffee do you have? Oh, I have, I have fair trade coffee. Well, why do you like, why, why did you, why do you particularly like fair trade coffee? And when you investigate what that artist does for their throughout their whole day, you actually find out all the different things that makes that artist tick and all the different things that you can then use to relate to the fan. Your fans, if you're an artist, now I'm, I'm talking to you as art, if you're an artist, your fan will relate to you on more, on more levels than just the fact that they like your music. So if you can engage with them and you say, well actually, I know you love my music, but um, I really support this cause. No, I really, uh, I really like this brand. I, you know, all these, all these different types of things, all these different ideas and values and beliefs. Can I say something? Mm. It's one of the reasons that the music it's been destroyed because, of course, a real artist has odd habits. I think most of the people have very different habits from mm -hmm. Lou Reed, let's say, or you know what I mean. It's like it's a completely insane model we brought that it has killed the artist itself that brought X Factor. And I think, I personally uh, watch through four and I listen to Miles Davis on the corner. I'm completely aware that most of the people, they cannot 
like it and cannot stand this music, I, you know, like everyone is different, and especially artists because of their research, which is supposed to be an artist, okay, researching all the time, they tend to differentiate themselves from the crowd and pretend to be part of the crowd is just trying to destroy the research of the artist which ultimately destroys the quality of his work. Sorry to say that, because I'm totally against that. Totally against? I, I'm, I, don't, I don't think a real artist can... I mean, of course they can say, like, I'm, I'm for, you know, this... Uh, you, you want it to be all about this, the music and, and, and that's it? I, I just think artists, they tend to be weirdos because of their, you know, of their research, you know what I mean? Like, it's, they have a different lifestyle. I mean, Look at myself, I speak mm -hmm. five languages and, I, some, and I, I work on the street giving leaflets, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. this, is, this is very typical, you know, like, uh, uh, it's, I, I think you cannot relate all the time. You can say like, hey guys, there's this demonstration for Tibet, you know, I'm really up for it, but to talk about the coffee and stuff, it, it, it doesn't... That's, that's, that's okay, that's an example. What I'm, what I'm saying to you is because we have this two-way conversation now, because we, we essentially we're more accessible to each other, we're much, much more connected, people will want to relate to you on more ways than one. They're going to want to get to know you as well as the art that you're creating. Okay? So, what's the... If yeah, so if... It's, so, Lorraine goes mm -hmm. like, yesterday I had sex with a woman and a dwarf, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, is because that's, you know, that, that, that's... You know, it depends that, on you. <laughs> That it's a lie, it's that, marketing, it's not true. No, yeah. it's not. That depends on you and how much you want to be open with your friends. Mm. Full stop. That's it. I, don't, I, don't know what to play. I mean, I know when, when, when I had a couple of kids come up to me and tell me blah, 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 I had my own choice of how much about my life I wanted to yeah. propose to them. They had absolutely no need to know that my favorite beer is Guinness. Right? That's my choice to tell them. They want to talk about my drumming? Let's talk about my drumming. They want to talk about my personal life? Red line. That's your choice. But if you do talk to them about your personal life, about your girlfriend, if you want to tell them you had sex in a barn, red light. You know? But if you do talk to your, that fan about your girlfriend, that fan will never forget you. That's the truth. Because today, today musicians are... We're the same. Fans, musicians, that's the same thing. 